Hey, Dr. Pound here with Heal Better Fast, and today we're talking about the bones in the hand. That's right, we're gonna talk about how to learn the bones in the hand. I'm gonna teach Amy, I'm gonna teach you the bones in the hand. I'm also gonna teach you the bones in the hand. Hopefully you can learn along with us. We're gonna start with the carpal bones. Now there's eight bones here in the car that make up the carpal bones, or the bones of the hand, or the bones of the wrist. And essentially it connects the long bones, the metacarpals, to the long bones in your arm, or your forearm. And like I said, there's eight of these. The mnemonic we learned in school is some lovers try positions that they can't handle. And we're gonna talk about what the names are that are associated with that mnemonic, but I just wanna let you know that so you can remember it, so you don't forget the names of the bones. So I'm gonna have Amy tell us the name of our first bone here. This bone here is called the scaphoid. Scaphoid bone, why is it called the scaphoid? Um, because it's a boat-shaped bone. Because it's a boat-shaped bone. It's actually the most commonly fractured bone in the wrist. So it's an important one to know, especially if you're working on the wrist. The second bone, it's a little, moon-shaped bone, so we call it? The lunate. The lunate. That's the L of the sum lovers tripositions. Here we go. Next bone. Triquetrum. Triquetrum, shaped because of its triangular shape. And right underneath it is a little P-shaped bone. It actually is here on the front of the wrist, but I'm gonna draw it here just kind of underneath this bone here and right here. Again, it gets its name because it's a little P-shaped or sesamoid bone, and this bone is called the... Pisiform. Pisiform bone, a common bone known in the chiropractic world as a contact for when we do an adjustment. So that little bony part of the wrist, that little pisiform pointiness, is this little P-shaped bone called the pisiform. So we have the scaphoid, the lunate, triquetrum, pisiform. Up here, we have two rectangular shaped bones that are shaped like tables. The first one is the trapezium bone, and the next, next one right next to it is the... Trapezoid. Trapezoid bone, the least commonly fractured bone, right next to the most commonly fractured bone, the scaphoid. So we have these two little square shaped bones connecting the third metacarpal is a head shaped bone, and that bone is called the... Capitate. Capitate. The lovely bone over here, which has a hook or it's hooked shape, is called the hamate. hamate. So we have scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Those are the carpal bones. On top of it, we have metacarpal bones. Metacarpal because they're connected to the carpal bones. We have five of these bones. So we have the carpal bones and the metacarpal bones. And then we have 14 phalanges. Why 14? Well, because here we have the proximal phalanges. Proximal because they're closest in proximity to our body. Middle phalanges, there's only four of these. The thumb's left out, poor little thumb. It's okay, you have two bones in you. Uh, we have the proximal Middle phalanges, there's four of them, one, two, three, four, and then the distal phalanges, one, two, three, four, five distal phalanges. All together we have 14 phalanges, 14 phalanges, eight carpal bones, five metacarpal bones, 14 phalanges, boom. All right, on top of that, we have ligaments that hold all the bones together, right? All these bones would be just a big bag of jelly beans if it weren't for the ligaments holding together the bones. And in practice, one of the most common injuries I see is with this scapholunate or lunotriquetrum ligaments where the patient has a forced flexion type injury, it could be like a sports injury or an accident, and that spreads these bones, these two bones, the scapholunate apart, tearing the ligament in between, causing a lot of pain. And six months later, they still have pain. And so they come in with a little bit of pain every time they pick up like luggage or anything heavy, and so what happens is we'll do a test to see, an orthopedic test to see if there's any reason that we should be doing imaging. 
And that test can simply be done by having the patient supinate the hand and ulnar deviate and radiate deviate the hand. And right now I'm just gonna put my hand on the carpal bones and the scaphoid and the lunate bones and I shouldn't feel anything too, too fishy or too crunchy. But if there is a problem, what we'll feel is kind of a clunk where the bones actually separate in here. Again, these two bones are separated because the ligament has been torn and there's associated pain, owie pain, and weakness when you try and use the wrist. And so if you're experiencing any wrist pain, don't just assume that it's just a simple sprain or strain. Make sure to get evaluated so that you can find out if you do have a serious injury that may require further care. My name is Dr. Pound, helping you heal better fast. We have again these four metacarpal bones, five metacarpal bones. Oh my goodness, we have five of them. Five metacarpal bones. We're too young to talk about.